Right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to a new week. Uh, hope you had a good week, uh, weekend. And uh, let's begin this time with a word of prayer. So maybe one of us can please lead in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this day. We thank you for the class we are about to have. God, we just pray that as pastor teachers, help us to open our mind and heart and understand the deep truths on your word and uh, help us to reflect you on this life, Lord, no matter where we are, where we work, what we do, whether we eat or drink, let it be done for your glory, Jesus. I bless all the classmates and the pastors in the name of Jesus. And God, I pray that uh, you will uh, give us good Wi-Fi connection throughout the sessions, that nothing be a distraction. Be with us and guide us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jafina. All right. So uh, we've been talking about uh, you know, uh, principles for the workplace. And, uh, uh, you know, as I mentioned in the first class itself, there, there will be certain principles that, uh, you know, and most of the principles that we are studying about can be used both at the workplace and in ministry, right? Uh, so there's no, it, it's not like, okay, this is only for the workplace. Uh, but we can use these principles in ministry uh, when you're building up an organization, when you're building up a church. Uh, these are some things that we, we we can use to be effective in everything that we're doing, right? Uh, uh, so we'll go ahead. We are in Chapter 7. Again, as I always mention, uh, feel free to stop me in between if you have any kind of questions. Uh, if you want to add your thoughts to, uh, you know, to what we are studying together, uh, feel free to add your thoughts as well, right? Okay, so we are in chapter seven, innovation and creativity. Uh, the first thing that comes to your mind, uh, you know, when you think about innovation and creativity is, uh, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind at least is, you know, that God is a God who is creative. He can, uh, you know, innovate and create things out of nothing. You know, Romans about it he calls those things that are not there as if they are there he can he, he can he has you know in genesis one he has created everything he purposed everything right so uh we need to understand that creativity and innovation is is something that is it comes from the wisdom of god and uh you know problem solving is a game changer uh we need to be inspired. We need to ask God uh, to give us the wisdom to understand and, and to give us the wisdom to in a way to be creative in our lives. Right? And now why is creativity important? Because we, if we keep doing the same thing, the same way, it becomes redundant. And when, when something becomes redundant, it may not be fruitful. Right? So this chapter, we'll just look at how um, you know, God can enable each one of us to be innovative, to be creative in everything that we are doing, right? So let's look at those points. First one, God reveals, instructs, and teaches. So ask him. And uh, when, when we, we know that God is a God who reveals, that God is a God who teaches us, instructs us all through the, the Old Testament, we see that God instructs his people, God teaches his people. And then even in the New Testament, uh, you know, with the Holy Spirit inside us, uh, we have this additional, uh, you know, benefit of just uh, inquiring of the Lord, right? Uh, let's look at Isaiah 28, 23 to 29. Uh, can one of us please read that? Uh, Isaiah 28, 23 to 29. It's on your notes. Isaiah 28. 23 to 29. Yes, can anyone read, please? Isaiah chapter 28, verse 23 to 29. Give ear and hear my voice, listen and hear my speech. Does the plowman keep blowing all day to sow? Does he keep turning his soil and breaking the clods? When he was leveled its surface, does he not sow the black cumin and scatter the cumin, plant the wheat and roast the barley in the appointed place, and the 
spelt in its place for he instructs him in right judgment his god teaches him for the black human is not threshed with a threshing sledge nor is a cart wheel rolled over the human but the black human is beaten out with a stick and the human with a rod bread flow must be ground therefore he does not thresh it forever break it with his cart wheel or crush it with his horsemen this also comes from the lord of hosts who is wonderful in counsel and excellent in guidance evan thank you jafina so here we see that uh, isaiah is writing and he's 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 just reminding the uh, the people that you know who gives wisdom uh, and he's taking this example of farming and he says look at how the farmer discovers all these things how does he know where to put the grain when to uh, till it when uh, you know what size it needs to be when should i uh, you know uh, pull it out when should i take the harvest how do i dill seeds everything how how does the farmer know right uh, and then it goes on in in that verse he says because god teaches him god instructs them right so god has taught a farmer how to do these things right and, and not only a farmer a farmer is just an example but god teaches us these things god knows everything about his creation the when the why the how uh, where and uh, you know the the way he reveals and instructs and uh, and the way he guides his people uh, in this process of discovery so here's the encouraging part you and i as believers with the holy spirit inside us we can always ask god right there are plenty of verses what does he say ask it shall be given to you uh, uh, so when we ask god i'm stuck in position i'm stuck in this place i don't know how to go forward i don't know what i must do should i wait should i go should i uh, how do i come out of this situation how do i come out of this challenge or 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 you know how do i uh, improve and better myself we can ask the lord right? and when we ask he teaches us he instructs us uh and and you know he reveals his plans to us uh, he makes things that are unclear clear to us and he's able to reveal the deep the dark secrets that are hidden uh, because he knows everything he knows everything so uh, this is so wonderful right uh, as as you know in ministry in our business and everything that we're doing imagine we can we can go to god now it's not like god is going to give us like a blueprint okay point 1 point 2 point 3 this is what you must do uh it may not be so but god can give us small nuggets of information do this okay. uh, or or you know uh, uh why don't you you know just do this for this problem that you're facing uh do this thing he may give us a thought he may give you an idea right now it may be a simple idea but we've never thought of it what is he doing he's instructing us right or he may reveal some secrets uh, uh, you know in uh, of his kingdom and he may reveal things in such a beautiful way that wow uh, right uh, so very important ask him ask god to give us innovation ask god to help us to be creative now being creative and being innovative uh, there is a natural process as well right as god gives the idea we have to work towards implementing it right so we co labor with god uh and there are plenty plenty of places that we can learn uh, you know we talked about nehemiah god gave the vision god gave the idea but he had to put it into force he had to nehemiah had to do the natural part of you know working but god gave him the wisdom god gave him reveal gave gave him the instructions right uh and so and so we can ask god like look at uh, elijah uh, god told him is going to rain there was a practical thing that need to be done god told daniel that this is what i'm going to do in babylon so but there was a practical thing to be done so in every way god is the god of all wisdom whether it be business whether it be a new business whether it be uh, anything in this world there is nothing that we can say okay god doesn't maybe i should check with my uh, you know seniors first no first go to god ask god and then we do the natural right you take uh, receive counsel from our seniors and uh, godly counsel and all of that 
but God knows all things. What about uh, science? He knows it all. Engineering? He knows it. Medicine? He knows it. He knows everything. Right? Uh, so we can ask him. Look at this. Uh, you know, I was reading this article about Israel um, uh, just recently. And, and the innovations that the Israelites come up with. Do uh, you know that most of the medicines that we consume are all, uh, you know, about 80% of them are, have been, you know, made in Israel. And then they get the whole uh, patent and then it goes, distributes all across the world. Uh, how is it? Because God is, you know, uh, God has given them the wisdom. Right? Uh, and, and so each one of us, no, no, it's not the, the, just Israel, but each one of us, even in what we are doing, can ask God to reveal it. Right? Wisdom is the most important thing. Right? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 5, 5 through 9. Get wisdom and insight. Do not forget or ignore what I say. Do not abandon wisdom and she will protect you. Love her and she will keep you safe. Getting wisdom is the most important thing you can do. Whatever else you get, get insight. Love wisdom, and she will make you great. Embrace her, and she will bring you honor. She will be your crowning glory. Right? Uh, and this was written by a man who was known as the wisest man in the world. And Solomon is saying, in all that I have done, all the riches, all the wealth, all the fame and the power, and uh, you know, every uh, everything that I have tasted, I'm sure he has tasted a lot. Solomon is saying, get wisdom, get insight, don't ignore that, because only wisdom will make you a great person. Right? Wisdom is having the insight into true nature of things and the ability to determine their best use. Right? Uh, wisdom enables us to determine the right course of action. Wisdom is the ability to have foresight, right? uh, to foresee what things might be like. Right? Uh, wisdom is to determine what needs to be done in the pr present uh, to arrive at the best results for the future. Right? Uh, and I'm, I'm sure most of us have heard this, you know, um, knowledge speaks, but wisdom listens. Wisdom is the appropriate use of knowledge. And personally, uh, this is personally, right? Uh, especially in, in ministry, of course, even in the corporate place, uh, but I'm just sharing from the ministry aspect. You know, we can be great preachers. We may know the scriptures in and out, which are very important, right? We may be, um, you know, very learned in the word and uh, you know, flowing in the gifts of the Spirit. That's all wonderful. Uh, but, you know, one thing that I really learned was you know, just to gain wisdom. Because sometimes in our zeal for things, in our zeal to do things, we, we switch off. We don't use wisdom. Right? Uh, and, and then I've, I've seen many, 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 many people fail. Great men and women of God, greatly used by God, but then no wisdom. Right? Uh, there was this one person that I knew of, I, uh, he was a, a, a pastor. Um, and this is many, many years ago. Uh, and I heard this from somebody and uh, it is true, uh, you know, a close friend of mine. So this person was in ministry and you know, like in ministry, doing everything, wonderful ministry. Ministry was growing here in the city of Bangalore, in India. And a lot of ministry, church was, uh, it, he didn't have a church, but it was a ministry. He did many things, evangelizing and, uh, you know, preaching in different places and all of that. And he had a secretary. Like he was married. He had uh, a wife. Uh, I'm not sure if he had a child at that time, but he was married. And... and uh, uh, what happened? He would. Uh, he had a secretary who was a woman. Now, uh, many times he had travel. Uh, you know, he had to go traveling to work and to, meaning to preach in different places. Uh, so his 
secretary would you know book tickets and uh, at times he would the secretary would go with him right uh, and so they would finish uh, maybe two three days ministry come back uh, and he was doing ministry right wonderful ministry people are lives are being touched people are uh, getting saved the lord is working miracles wonderful but what happened over time uh sad thing but you know there was uh you know the secretary and him got involved they both got involved and it came out in the open uh, the secretary herself said so this is what happened we got involved with each other and, and it went out everyone got to know and the wife said i just thought she was a secretary just thought he's going for ministry. Well, she was very heartbroken, but uh, after a lot of counseling, and he, he stepped down from the ministry, went into counseling, uh, took many years break, and uh, the Lord just restored their relationship. Uh, but the damage was done. Now, is he a wonderful man of God? Yes. Did he walk in wisdom? No. Why? Because it's not wise to go with your secretary to do ministry somewhere. When you have a wife, take your wife and go. Right? It's simple. It's common sense. Right? Or you go alone. Or you have a male partner uh, to go with. Right? Uh, right? So these, these are things that we need to think about. We have a lot of knowledge. Right? But the enemy can use anything to bring us down, right? Uh, so be careful, be wise, right? Uh, you know, some of the things uh, that we do at APC is we have certain guidelines, and those guidelines are good. It's important. It's good that we have those guidelines. It's nothing wrong. It may look sound legalistic, but it's not legalistic. It's just being wise, right? The wisdom of God empowers and provides good counsel common sense, right? Common sense, good leadership, fair legislation, and brings wealth and glory, right? It was the wisdom of God that gave birth to creation. Therefore, when we are doing something, ask God for wisdom. God, how do I do this in the right way? How must I speak? What must I say? What must I not say? What must I do? What must I not do? Lord, reveal to me. Right? And I think that we need the wisdom of God. And there are plenty of stories that I can share by great, wonderful men and women of God. Right? Uh, just, you know, they, they left their calling. God has called them for. They just had to abandon it because, uh, because of silly things which could have just been avoided, they had wisdom. You know, uh, another businessman, uh, they're not from our church, but uh, another businessman that I know of, uh, a strong believer, wonderful man of God, he would, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, donate and, uh, you know, give for missions, missions fields, and wonderful man of God, uh, powerfully, you, you know, God is also using him uh, to preach and teach in different places. But what happened? Uh, you know, as he was doing all of this, uh, there were some unscrupulous methods that was used in the business, uh, and the business was affected. It came out in the open, and because of that, the business broke down. Nobody even called him again for ministry. All the words that held weightage was gone. Right? So, as children of God, as believers, let us all ask for wisdom. This is something that I personally always ask. I say, so God, give me wisdom. Help me to do the right things at the right time. Because in our zeal, we may end up doing the wrong things in a wrong way, or the right things in the wrong way. Right? Uh, so we need to be aware. Right? Uh, welcome the spirit of the spirit of wisdom to anoint you. 
Isaiah 11 and 2, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. He's a spirit of understanding. He's a spirit of knowledge. Right? The Holy Spirit imparts the mind of Christ to us. The Holy Spirit reveals things which eyes have not seen. In 1 Corinthians 2, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard, and the things that have not been thought of. Right? So welcome his work in your life. Speak to him. Seek his guidance. Ask him for wisdom and tune into the Holy Spirit. Now, how do we do that? We need to spend time with God. You know, in our Sunday series, we're talking about daily devotion. We need to spend time with God. We need to spend time in God's word, uh, in prayer, in the Holy Spirit, asking God to anoint. And wisdom will come. It, it keeps coming. God will reveal to us. God will tell us. Right, what we must do. Now, I remember uh, uh, this quite a funny incident happened, but uh, I'm very grateful that that this happened. Uh, you know, when we moved to the city of Mangalore, uh, there was a bunch of, you know, about ten girls who joined the church. About ten girls, uh, and we were so about twenty people in the church. Ten girls. Um, and so every now and then these girls would come to either to clean the church or for worship practice. Uh, and I remember you know, it was the initial days. So uh, these girls would come and the, the, there were times they would come, come for, if they were coming for worship practice, so one girl would come and one, you know, one of them would play the drums or whatever. Uh, many times at church, like there was one girl or maybe two girls, I would not enter the church. So the girls say, come, uh, Pastor, come, we'll practice. And I said, no. And uh, you know, they would say, why? I said, no, we'll wait for some time. And so I wait for the guy to come. And only them start the practice. Now they may they may think, oh, what a silly thing this is. Uh, you know, in 2020, 2020 or 2020, this is a millennium. This generation is so old-fashioned. I say, yes, I am old-fashioned. Because the devil is the same, right? It doesn't matter whether it's whether it's 2020 or whether it's 2040 or 1990s, he's still the same. And to this day, I do that. Sometimes when uh, I know that there's only one girl singing, I take my wife and go, come and sit. So what am I doing? Trying to avoid opening traps for the devil. Right now, it may sound very silly, uh, but I thank God. Till now, you know, I know that you know, I haven't, uh, you know, fallen in any trap. And praise God for that. Right. So now, why do we need it? We need the wisdom of God. Now, I'm not saying that you have to do this, right? Uh, but just be wise. Uh, these are things that are very silly. Because sometimes we are too anointed, we forget about doing the right things. Right? Too much of anointing. Right? So just be wise. Just think about what you what we are doing. Right? There's an anointing for artistic and creative skills. Uh, uh, men and women, we all as believers, we are designated by God for it's for a specific purpose, and God gives us artistic skills. The Spirit of God imparted to them, uh, or was uh, imparted to them as for completing a certain task. Right? Don't let ideas get stagnant. Right? So if God is giving you an idea, God is giving you a strategy, don't let it get stagnant. Begin to work on it, begin to develop on it. We talked about it in the last chapter, strategy. Um, and how to strategize, right? Uh, uh, so when you strategize, you you ask God for wisdom. You write it down. You keep developing on it. Uh, keep in mind that uh, 
even after receiving the endowment of the Holy Spirit, we must follow this up with hard work and dedication and doing it. We talked about this as well. So God will give us the wisdom, the idea. We have to work to get things done. Right? Don't just identify the problem, bring the solution. <clears throat> right? Let's read, uh, it's a big, big, uh, verse uh, Genesis 41 29 to 40 but I'll read that okay now this is the whole thing of Joseph right we know the story uh, Joseph is in the prison the Pharaoh has a dream now there will be seven years of plenty in the land of Egypt he has already uh, uh, interpreted the dream now he's he's bringing a solution There'll be seven years of plenty in all of the land of Egypt. And after that, there'll be seven years of famine. And all the good years will be forgotten because the famine will ruin the country. The time of plenty will be entirely forgotten because the famine which follows will be so terrible. The repetition of your dream means that the matter is fixed by God and that he will make it happen in the near future. Now, you should choose some man with a wisdom and insight and put him in charge of the country. You must also appoint other officials and take a fifth of the crops during the seven years of plenty. Order them to collect all the food during the good years that are coming and give them authorities to store up grain in cities and guard it. The food will be a reserve supply for the country during the seven years of famine which are going to come on Egypt in this way. People will not starve. The king and his officials approved this plan, and he said to them, We will never find a better man than Joseph, a man who has God's spirit in him. The king said to Joseph, God has shown you all this. So it is obvious wisdom and insight than anyone else. I will put you in charge of my country, and all my people who will obey your orders. Your authority will be second only to a mind. What a powerful encounter this was. You know, it, it just shows how when God wants to change the sequence of events, he can do it in just a couple of minutes. Who knew about Joseph? Nobody knew about him. I think that, you know, uh, uh, Probably the people inside there in the prison knew, right? Potiphar's palace, a few of them knew him. Right? Uh, and only a few of them knew what he was. And first of all, he was in prison. Joseph not only interpreted the dream, but he also gave a solution to that dream. Joseph didn't say, okay, here's what it is. A pharaoh, seven years, you'll have plenty. Then it will be followed by seven years of famine. Make your plans. I got to go back. He says, okay. Now, this is the problem. Here's what you can do. Seven years, you save up. So that the next seven years, you will have plenty for you and for the city and the entire nation of Egypt. He gave a solution. What happened? God elevated him. He became the second in command. Right? Uh, he... That he described what was happening and he gave the king an idea as to what he must do. Right? God's Spirit gives us wisdom to comprehend and understand the true nature of problems. Uh, there will be situations, there will be problems. Right now, uh, recently, uh, you know, a few of them, uh, especially in our uh, a few of them that we know of, you know, they have lost their jobs because of the you know recession that's happening. People are companies are laying off uh, a lot of employees, and uh, you know, uh, many of them came to uh, me and said, uh, "Just pray that you know, God can give us a job." It's very disheartening, right? It's very sad to you know people who are working there faithfully for the past you know ten years or, or so. There are some of them who are working there for five years. 10 years, uh, but it's, it's sad to hear that they've been laid off and that it's just an email. This is your last day or this is your last week. Thank you for you know serving with us. And, uh, it's very difficult and they have families, they have children to look after. 
Oh, but I, uh, you know, I was just praying yesterday, saying, God, oh, give me the wisdom. You know, what can I say to these people? You know, it's a, it's a difficult time. They have worries. They are challenging. You know, uh, so we need the wisdom to understand these situations that we are in. And that may not be only on this. It could be also about our children, about families, um, you know, raising up our next generation uh, or how to do ministry, how to start off good businesses, anything. Um, God gives us the wisdom to comprehend and understand the true nature of problems. He gives us the ability to foresee situations and plan ahead. And that is very important. We need to foresee. What is ahead? Okay, these are things, so uh, this is what I must do. And, and later on, uh, we'll also talk about uh, financial stewardship and financial planning. Right. Next one, step out to think and act in unfamiliar territory. Let's read this verse. First Chronicles chapter 28, 10, 12, and 19. Look sharp now. God has chosen you to build his holy house. Be brave, determined, and do it. Then God presented his son, Solomon, with the plans for the temple complex, courts, storerooms, meeting rooms, and the place for atoning sacrifice. He turned over the plans for everything that God's Spirit had brought to his mind, the design of the courtyards, the arrangement of the rooms, and the closets for storing all the holy things. Here are the blueprints for the whole project as God gave me to understand it, David said. Look at this. God gives the wisdom to David on how to prepare everything. Right? And last week we talked about how God gave David the wisdom to also have that 24-7 worship for I think it was 33 odd years, 34 years. Right? How God gave him the wisdom. 288 uh, prophetic singers and um, the the teams that would you know uh, uh, roster them over over the, over time and uh, and how that worship did not stop. God gave him the wisdom. Uh, one of the things that hold us back from innovating is our reluctance to step into unfamiliar territory. Right now, there's a saying, right? Okay. It's easy, our comfort zone. We thrive in our comfort zone. Right? Me too. And uh, uh, you know, you asked me to speak some, you know, uh, uh, maybe any other thing, right? I get very nervous, right? But if you ask me to teach or preach the word of God, it, it just comes out. It's it's my comfort zone, right? Uh, or if you ask some of us, you know. Maybe your worship leaders or your teachers, you, know, it's, you have a comfort zone. If you're a worship leader, you can ask a worship leader, hey, can you lead worship for the next two hours? It's their comfort zone. Right? We have our comfort zones, and it's wonderful, right? Because we thrive in it, we are excellent in it. But some of the things that stop us, from being innovative is when we don't want to step out of our comfort zone, right? Uh, unfamiliar territory. David grew up as a shepherd boy, but from a shepherd boy, God took him into leadership, military experience, and these running away from Saul period was, uh, was like a training for him. Uh, he had no prior knowledge of architecture, design of buildings, nothing. He had no understanding. He was a shepherd boy. He knew how to kill a bear and a lion. He was good with his slick. He didn't know that you have, you know, about architecture. This is how the layout should be. This is how you can make the structure strong. Nothing. He had no prior knowledge about it. But the spirit of God gave him the wisdom uh, to design the entire complex, right? to complete the organizing of the, the Levites and the priests and everything was done by David. He never went for leadership classes on how to uh, build teams. He never worked in a team. He was a one-man, one-boy 
going and looking after the sheep, coming back home, resting and sleeping. His brothers didn't bother about him. So he's, he, he doesn't know anything about teams. When he was running away, he was alone. He had one friend, Nathan. Right? And then there were, then there were some, some of them who said, come, I'll come under your leadership. I can just picture. Uh, so what do I do with these guys? Maybe he went back uh, and he prayed and he said, God, all these people are saying they'll come with me. What should I do? How do I, you know, what, what must I do with them? I don't know. Right? It's unfamiliar ground. And But God gave him the wisdom. God gave him the wisdom to build the temple and, 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 and come up with these plans and ideas. Of course, he didn't build it, but he came up with all the strategies and uh, he transferred and he, he shared all of that with his son Solomon, who went on to build the temple. Right? But everything was given by the Spirit of God. I can always, I can picture Solomon saying, you know, Dad, where did you get all, how did you get all these ideas? So David saying, the Spirit of God gave me the wisdom. The Spirit gave him the exact specifications on how much gold, how much silver was needed for each article in worship. And, and all these were unfamiliar areas, yet David received details from the Lord. Right? There may be unfamiliar things right, that God may ask us to step into. Right? Maybe you're a housewife. Or, you know, you're just working from home. God may ask us to step out and say, you know, uh, why don't you start this you know, business? I said, God, I'm just a housewife. How will I do it? God will give you the wisdom. Right? You know, uh, on, on the day, Feb 18th was our uh, APC celebrated our 22 year anniversary and we were uh, you know, just got the opportunity to talk with a pastor and he was sharing uh, about that first Sunday service and how, you know, uh, uh, it was just, you know, God gave him an idea and, you know, to start off with what you have. That's all, right? Because it was, you know, he was mentioning that, you know, they went to many places look, looking to hire a hall, but they didn't get any places. So he was very discouraged. Uh, and as he was praying, God told him, uh, start with what you have. What did he have? You know, he was staying in his father's house, his dad's house, and uh, he said, this is what I have. Okay, start here. And they started in the living room of uh, APC, started in the living room of the of his father's house. Okay. Start with what you have. It was a simple instruction. Many times God may tell us, you know, to step out or to start with what you have. Right? For example, if God is saying start a business, uh, and this is what I want you to do. Start with what you have. Right? It's good to have the vision. Okay, one day I'll be this, this, this. But start with what you have. Even though it's unfamiliar ground. Right? We need to learn to step out into unfamiliar ground. And part of this is receiving ideas from the Holy Spirit. Right? And even as we receive these ideas, what must we do with these ideas? We must enhance our knowledge, our understanding, and our skill. We have to up our game, right? Get better at what we are doing. Daniel 1.17. As for these four young men, God gave them knowledge and skill in all literature and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. Right? Daniel and his three friends were in exile in a foreign land. They had been selected to be in, you know, trained in language and literature by the Babylonians. Now, what happened? They were young, they were bright, they were intellectuals. So God stepped in. He empowered these young men to learn, acquire knowledge, understanding, and skill. And so they, they learned everything. They learned the culture of the Babylon. They learned the language. They were there. Their job was to be in the temple, in the court of the Babylonian king. To be there and to learn, right? And uh, you know, uh, they grew in wisdom. Why is it that when the third empire, the Persian Empire, came, even though they destroyed the Babylonians, uh, you know, Darai, King Darius didn't say, "Oh, now you serve the Babylonians, no? So I'm not going to keep you around here. They are our enemies." No, 
said, King Darius said, see, we've heard about you. You have done some good things. So you only continue as governor. You only look after the things. Uh, and he, that's also, right? So when we uh, enhance our knowledge, understanding and skill, God will open the right doors for us. It's something that we must do, right? Uh, I remember this, I was sharing, you know, yesterday, uh, just talking to a few of our church folks, and uh, uh, I was sitting with them, you know, I'm so, I was so, I was so camera shy. I shared with some of us here, that's so, very camera shy. I, I, I can't talk in front of a camera. I, very, very camera shy. I'd be very, oh, man, how do I, what do I say? I would go blank. Uh, but then over time, I realized, hey, I can't keep saying I'm shy of the camera and do nothing about it. Now, now it's come a time, uh, you know, gone of those days when everything was, you know, going outreaches and doing all these things. Now things are changing, right? I need to be bold enough if I want to uh, do something. Uh, you know, uh, I want to, uh, you know, serve the Lord, serve effectively. I need to enhance. I need to understand. I need to, uh, you know, come out of these uh, places, my comfort zone. So, was it difficult? Yes, but there were some things that I had to learn, and I'm still learning. Right? It's not like I've learned it. I'm still learning. Um, do I still feel nervous? Yes, uh, but I keep telling myself, "God, help me." You know, uh, uh, you know, I keep learning. Right? How to uh, uh, be confident in front of the camera? How to speak well? Just practical things, upskilling, right? Uh, uh, on how we can do well. See, some of them are wired. You know, they can look at the camera and just speak out of the abundance of their heart and uh, that's not one of me right uh, i'm very conscious about uh, you know these cameras and uh, but i i'm learning right so we can all enhance our knowledge our enhance our skill our uh, upskill and what we have uh, what we've not tried try it see if it's something that god wants us to do right uh, Proverbs 19.8 says, do yourself a favor and learn all you can. Then remember what you learn and you will prosper. Right? Uh, do yourself a favor and learn all that you can. So it's a favor that we are doing to ourselves. Learn all that you can right? and remember what you learn. So uh, step up. Right? Let's step out um, even in areas where you feel uh, you are not confident, it's all right. And, uh, you know, it could be music, it could be uh, in terms of family, raising up children, it could be in terms of business uh, or team leading or raising up leaders. Uh, yes, yes. I, uh, see, because David, as we talked about, David didn't know anything about you know, team leading. And I can, you know, I can really sympathize and understand what he may have gone through because uh, I, I didn't I didn't have any team leading skills uh, and all of a sudden you're there you have some 12, 15 people under you and say, okay what do I do with them um, and so over time we can upskill we can learn and uh, it's very important to do that next one use your imagination train your memory Second Timothy 1 7 powerful words we use it quite often for God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power love and sound mind God has designed our mind uh, God gave us the ability to use our mind right uh, our mind is our imagination our reasoning and our memory like uh, and we talked about this on the last se series my mind we we went through those series uh, and how the mind is a powerful tool, uh, yet it's also a tool which the enemy can use and come against us, right? Uh, the imagination. But use your imagination, train your memory in a way that can honor God, can in a way that will glorify God, in a way that can build each one, each build you up, right? Uh, we train and develop our mental faculties, and we use our imagination, and we. Uh, and we build on things, right? Whatever we are doing, we build on it. Um, you know, my teacher used to, at Bible College, I remember he used to always say this, you know, uh, the greatest nation is your imagination uh, because there's so much that can be done and nobody can stop us from imagining, whether good or bad.
if God wants us to, you know, if, if you feel like God uh, calling you for something and you imagine about it, nobody can stop you from thinking, hey, one day my ministry will be 5,000 people or one day my business will turn over, uh, you know, this much amount of money and uh, we'll be a business that will go for it. Nobody can stop you from imagining, right? Uh, but even as you imagine, ensure that uh, you, you train yourself, you train your memory, and make sure that in everything that we do in we are glorifying God. Right? I'm sure David and Joseph would have never imagined where, you know, they were just simple men, right? but never imagined where God would have taken, God had taken them, Daniel, uh, to these high positions, simple men. Not very intellectual. Look at the uh, in the New Testament, the the disciples, simple, uneducated, unschooled people. God used them so powerfully, right? Uh, they may have never imagined that you know, twenty two thousand odd years later that we're talking about uh, Apostle Peter, or fisherman from Galilee. They would have never thought about it. Uh, so what, what are we trying to get at? God can do great things in and through our lives. Uh, but we need to ask God for wisdom. We need to step in. We need to do the practical, uh, whether it is business, our family, our workplace, our you know, ministries. Even if we are volunteering in the church, we need the wisdom of God. Right. So uh, this class, if we haven't received anything, take this main point. Right? We need the wisdom of God to be effective in our lives. Right. So let's pray and close. Maybe one of us can please pray. Any one of us. Any questions before that? No, no. We have just a minute left. Any questions? No questions. OK. Can one of us please pray and close? Rosalind or Lubega, anyone can close and pray, please. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day and for the lecture we've had and for the lecturer, for all the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that you've poured onto his heart and his life to be able to inculcate skills, knowledge, value, wisdom into us, Lord. So, Lord, as we learn, let's try to put innovation and creativity into our daily living in the expansion of your kingdom, Lord. Lord, we also pray for, for everybody who has attended this class, Lord, also to enlarge his, his fear of influence by using creativity and innovation. We do pray for the family of the pastor and for everybody who is in this class to always inculcate, to always expand the kingdom through so still the use of knowledge, skill, and understanding. I do pray in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. And all of us say, Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I just want to make a note here. This uh, next class, that is this coming Wednesday, I have a recording, uh, so I will not be uh, taking class. I'll post a, uh, uh, post a note on the classroom, so just to keep you updated. This Wednesday, we will not have class, uh, so we'll meet on Monday. Right? Thank you so much. Have a great week ahead. God bless. Thank you, Pastor. Yes.